Maxime Vacher Le Graf goes into round 10 with six and a half points. That puts him in a must win situation in the last round of the Gibraltar Masters. We'll find out whether he can do it or not tomorrow. For now, he joins us in our studio. Maxime, a win in round nine here at the Gibraltar Masters. It looked pleasant for you, but was it, how bad was it for Black? Yeah, I didn't think it was uh, altogether all that bad, but uh, definitely on the unpleasant side after we went to the end game. Uh, I'm not sure he had to go D5 because I was not exactly sure what I was doing. Uh, I didn't remember any of my notes. Uh, as <laughs> Just always. a move then. <laughs> yeah, that's the usual. Have you been having some late nights? Mm, <laughs> not really, I mean, no, no more than usual, but... Uh, the thing is, um, I actually didn't want to play this line. And then uh, when I came to the board, I saw Veselin next to me <laughs> and he played that exact line uh, uh, for f three or four days ago against Cotronias. And I was like, yeah, it's actually a good line. Uh, I'm stupid not to have thought about it. So I played it without uh, checking, checking things. So you're telling us this was just over the board, just looking? No, I mean, I knew yeah. this line, but I... You were inspired reach. over the board by sitting next to Westlin. Yeah. All right. So Queen H4, Knight D5. Uh, and here, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure if King takes D8 with the idea that Knight D5, Bishop D5, and now you protect A6. I wasn't sure that was so clear because, for instance, Knight E4, maybe already you have some Knight F4, Bishop F3, and I don't know, some Knight E5, I thought I'm um, probably going to be better at the end, but um, it didn't look that obvious. Um, but rook it also feels like a like a hand move. Yeah, but this position it's, it's um, isolated isolated pawn, and importantly also the pawn on a6 is always an issue. So the bishop on b7 is really really restricted. So for now my pieces are not really developed, but uh, it goes out quite nice, and I think it's just uh, slightly better. So the problem with rook d8 is that he's forced to create this isolated pawn yeah. because of the a6 weakness. Yeah, and after rook e8, rook e1, I was thinking maybe he should go rook e4, try to get active counterplay right away. But I wanted bishop d2 to answer rook e8 with bishop d3 and get into this end game. Yeah. Yeah, take, 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 <laughs> take. And well, it's definitely a bit better, but... For instance, after knight e5, it's maybe not such a big deal. I probably have to go bishop e2 back. At some point, I may have a5, but um, okay. again, I'm still playing against this bishop. But so is this the kind of position you just play on forever? Yes. Hmm. something like this. So he went knight f8, and I didn't like it because after a5, knight e6, a, b. Point is, he cannot really take on f4, knight c5, knight e2, king f1. It looks like he has bishop c6, but then I'll just take... Bishop b5 and knight d3. And he does get the pawn b6 back, but it's, um, I mean, he's not a pawn done, but I'll just go b3 by making to d4, d5, Still and d6. Still unpleasant, are, yes. No, more than unpleasant. More than probably, unpleasant. Probably just lost. Oh, wow. So bishop b6, bishop d2, and I will, yeah, I had this move bishop d3. He cannot take on b2 because of rook b1 and... I have to ask you, how were you evaluating? What is the evaluation of this ending while you're playing on the board for you? Um, clearly better. Clearly better. Yeah. I had no doubt about this. So, okay, I we just played some random moves uh, for a while. So, I don't know. Apparently, with Tech C6 was possible for me, but I didn't want to help his pawn structure. And for a while, I, I was looking like I was making a lot of progress. So, yeah, I think he should have played h5 at some point because allowing g4 and f4, yeah, I just one nice line is if we should be sent in g5, of course. So he played against this, but it's always a difficult decision when you're uh, in pressure to go h6 or h5. Yeah, when and here finally he found some good move because I threatened bishop d4. And if I exchange the dark squared bishops, it's almost over. Like I right. win one rook to d4, the other rook to a5, and then my king over. Uh, but he went bishop e5, and after bishop d4, he has f6. And um, my first intention was actually going back 
um, two, I mean, because I created a weakness, but then mm -hmm. I realized after bishop c3, bishop d2, he has d4. And suddenly my rooks feel a bit misplaced. And I mean, he can create an attack on the e file by rook e7, rook e6, threatens rook e1 mate. Yeah. So, um, so I um. thought for a bit and I saw that I could play rook b4. Uh, with the idea of rook a5, if bishop d6 would back to a4 and I hit the pawn on d5, so. Uh, if bishop d6, you go rook a... No, you went bishop d6. Okay. And I went rook b6. I mean, I said rook a4 when my rook right. was on a5. Um, and here, yeah, bishop b4, bishop e3. So he went for this d4 to get maybe some counterplay on my pawns on the king side. Uh, bishop b7, but here I found some nice lines, so rook a4, rook d6, here I was not so sure, um, because I can go king e2, but then he goes g5, and he creates counterplay for life against this pawn on f3, so king f2, rook d7, let's say. Let's, let's try and get that. <laughs> yeah, if I take on a6, he takes, he takes on f4, and in mm. some d3 at some point, uh, that was not to my taste, so I thought I'll, I'll go h4. And here, yeah, he helped me quite a bit. I was not exactly sure about a move like this. I'm now h5. If I take, he takes, then king g6, king f5 comes very fast. So I thought I was going, no, exactly no. <laughs> no, I was going to go g5. He takes, I take, then king d3, and I think this should be winning, but. Yeah, you're gonna get the d4 pawn. Yeah. Um, yeah, and importantly, of course, when I play root takes d4, I cover h4 as well. Hmm. Like rook e6, king d3, bishop g3, rook d4. Um, but after bishop c8, yeah, I find this nice line, f5, if it takes rook c4 wins. So he went bishop oh, d7, now rook b4. Again, if gf, now rook, it's rook b7, rook c6, for instance, bishop f5. Take, take. I threaten bishop f4, he has to go king g8. Yeah. And I'll take uh, that pawn. Right. Yeah, and h5 and over. So bishop b6, and but by now, yeah. Bishop f4, he has to go a5, rook c6, bishop e4. And then you found a pawn finally, and eventually the game. A really nice technical grind. Um, yeah, it felt like a decent game. Um, I was not about a couple of decisions but of course it's impossible in these kind of positions to get uh, you know to prevent black from having any any sort of counterplay so I, I think I gave him uh, as little as I could well that's good and now going into the final round you have six and a half points uh, that kind of puts you in a, so a must win kind of a position for a good finish tomorrow uh, definitely so I'll wait for my pairing um, if I'm black, I'm hoping that my opponent will also be in, in a fighting mood and uh, then we'll see what, how it goes. All right, we wish you all the best for tomorrow's crucial game and hopefully we'll have you back with us here. Thank you.